Hi everyone. First thing first, we are going to talk about what exactly microservices are, and then we will be taking it further in terms of our discussion on how we can work on those microservice deployments and how what is the main difference between microservice and the monolithic architecture that we have and how we can get started with those. So that is what we are going to discuss. So microservice is what microservice is basically dividing a monolithic architecture into smaller parts. For example, if we talk about the main application, so it may be having, for example, let's suppose we have a client one for which we want to deploy the app. We may have client one for which we want to deploy the app. So what we can do is we can go ahead and deploy all the components as a single entity. For example, here we can deploy, let's say here we have the card system for this e-commerce application. We have the payment system. We have the catalog system. We have the user management system. We have a notification system. And they all need to be up and running as a part of keeping the application up. So if we want, we can design all these solutions. We can deploy them all as a part of a single application package, like we do in normal Docker. So for example, we can have a single Docker file created, and that is going to run all of these components in a single container setup. Even if they are deployed in a cluster, so again, at the end, each and every container is going to contain all the packages. That means it is going to contain the shopping cart, the payment system, the catalog system, everything, all packaged inside a single container only. That means if we have to update any of the existing packages, then that is going to be not an easy task. If we, if any of the packages, that means if suppose the payment system is not working, then the entire application is going to go down because of failure of one component since they are tightly coupled with each other. So the entire application is go down. It was going to go down. And plus, later on, if we want to, let's say, update any one of the services then we have to always redeploy the entire package because here they are all packaged together. So even a small change will require the entire app to be deployed again and again. And if we are going to deploy the entire app again, there is always a good possibility of making errors. And those errors can make the entire application go down, which is not going to be feasible for any company, be it for small to medium, small, medium or even for large scale enterprises, they are not going to be feasible. These kind of frequent failures. So now this kind of setup where everything is packaged inside a given, we can say application or a container. So this kind of setup is what we refer as a part of monolithic architecture. So we can have a messaging system in place, for, but again, even though it is not going to work because here the entire setup is like a single package altogether. So what we can do is, now this is what we refer as a part of monolithic architecture. So we can convert this monolithic architecture into the microservice setup by, by splitting each and every part into smaller parts. For example, we have this catalog system. So what we can do is, we can define for the catalog system as in, we can define catalog and we can define catalog as a separate container. We have a, system for payment gateway so payment can be deployed as a separate container separate package we have the shopping card so we have shopping card defined as a separate package separate container so now instead of packaging everything inside a single app we are distributing them under different packages and if you want we can run multiple containers running the same service for example we can have three containers each for the payment systems, for the shopping cart, for the user catalog system and so on. So that even if one container is down still, the load can be easily deployed, handled by the containers deployed as a cluster, we can do that. Second advantage here is if we want to update a single package, for example, we are looking to update only payment gateway. I suppose we have partnered with a new payment provider and now we are going to add that payment provider into our application so we don't have to touch the codes for shopping cart we don't have to touch the code for the user management the catalog system and everything we only have to touch the code for the payment gateway that's it and when we are going to update the payment gateway because it is being deployed as a part of multi-cluster setup 
so the load can be easy we can say handled by the other containers and once we have thoroughly tested the entire environment then the load can be easily transferred from the main component to this as per the requirement so this is what we define this is what we do by using a microservice setup and microservices are and again they have been gaining popularity since 2015 only so majority of the applications now they are all divided into smaller components and that reduces the overall maintenance cost deployment cost for the company so that the entire work can be minimized plus the availability of the application is also going to be increased because of the entire application now divided into separate core components so this is what we refer as a part of microservice setup first of all clear the concept of microservice before we see how they communicate to each other by using the messaging platform so that's how these all things are divided and there are multiple ways of creating the microservice setup so first of all we have to make sure that again the entire application should be working as an automated service so that we have less dependency of one component over the other the entire application should be highly scalable that means whenever we want to scale up or scale down the resources for any app we should be able to easily do that and then it should be completely decentralized so that we can work on managing the application at any point of time and again we can do that easily and then it should be resilient that means the fail failure of one node should not affect the availability of the application it should be easily replaced with whatever other nodes we have so this is what is these are the core principles for any microservices and we have to make sure in case we have multiple container setup done then the entire load should be well distributed among different containers here so these all things should be well defined and that is what we do by using the multi-container setup available here so these all components they also have to communicate to each other and they communicate via the messaging platform like we have now we can make use of kafka we can make use of the online based messaging platform like for aws we have sqs for the SEO platform, we can make use of the PubSub and the Event Hub service and so on. So these all are defined as a part of the different platforms that we can use for managing the microservice application because at the end, when we are going to refer to these, they all have to communicate to each other. So for example, let's say if you take a simple example for MVC architecture, the model is the one that gets the update. Model is the one that gets the up that is going to be used for getting the database so view is what the users are going to see at the front end and then we have controller which simply adds like an intermediary between the database and the view so the user they are going to if they need a data they are going to send the request to controller the controller is then going to send the request to model to fetch the data and then model simply sends the data back to the controller and the controller is the one that gets the data and simply sends it back to the view so the users they get get the new data set so here we are using an application server but again the main problem here is let's say if this particular app we can say this background server or this backend server is not available and still if the users they are continuously entering the fields for example they are continuously entering the form and again we are there are 50 form submissions in every in a minute and suppose if there's no backend server server available for five minutes that means we will be processing, we'll be losing those 150 form submission, those 250, 250 form submissions in five minutes. That will be a big loss for the company. So we do need to have a messaging system put in place in between that can handle all the messages. So whatever form fillings or whatever messages are being generated by front end, they can be stored in this messaging platform. Like we have Kafka, we have in Azure, we have the event hub servers, and then we can allow the other components to subscribe. So whenever they are going to subscribe to the messages, even though the front end is not available, they can still read the data from the, uh, from this topic. And even though if the let's say if the back end is not, not available, they can still read the data from the topic here. So again, these things are all defined as a part of the setup. And this is where we are going to make use of the messaging platform in order to 
allows to communicate these microservices components to each other. So even they are going to send data and that both at the synchronous and asynchronous manner. And this is what we define by using messaging platform here. So let's talk about how these messaging platforms, they all are going to be defined. So there are multiple vendors out there who are giving us the access to this kind of messaging platform here. So if we, in, if we talk about Azure, then we do have a service called as Event Hub. And this microservice is widely used because there are multiple advantages for using this microservice. We can say setup, we, we do get to make sure that the entire application can work independently and they are all going to communicate to each other by using the different APIs. So this is what we define by using microservice. Let's see how we can set it up on top of the Azure platform. So here we do have a service named as storage queues. So we do have a storage account service and here we can, in case we don't have a storage account available yet, then we are going to create a storage account. In case it is already available, then we can go ahead and create the queues here. So if you want, we can start by creating a queue or we can make use of the service per setup. So first of all, once we have the queue created, it is going to work just the way we have the SQS service offered by AWS, which allows us to create a queue and that queue can be used for the used by the producers of the messages to generate the messages and again to save it there. And then we can create multiple subscribers who are going to read those messages from the queue here. Let me check the access for the queue here. Just a minute, everyone in the lab. Taking a bit of time, everyone. So no worries. We'll be continuing on the same part in our subsequent session. So again, a big thank you to you all for being a part of the session, uh, session everyone. Thank you for joining and have a great day ahead. Take care.